All right, hey, welcome. 19.3 is among us. Halfway point, right? Five weeks of just grueling, tough workouts, and we're halfway done. Um, with that, we're going to go over some tips and tricks, some points of performance, how to approach this workout. And then um, I'm also going to remind you, and you're going to hear me say this over and over, is that, hey, this is one of those one and done workouts. There's no reason that you should be doing this twice. But first, I do want to make some announcements real quick. First one is one of our OG coaches, Coach Peter Younger. He's going to be leaving us. He's been here for four years now, and it's just his time to go. Um, he's going to be leaving us in the middle of March. So March 16th, we want to give him a proper send-off. We're going to be doing a going away wad for him. It's called Beer Grace. So BYOB. That's March 16th at 6 p.m. We've also got CrossFit Gymnastics Seminar coming out here April 27th and 28th at CrossFit Mongoose. And CrossFit Weightlifting coming out here for a seminar June 1st and 2nd at CrossFit Mongoose as well. Put those on your calendars. Sign up for them. Those are great opportunities to learn CrossFit Weightlifting and some gymnastics as well. All right, so with that, 19.3. What is 19.3? Whew, it's a doozy. 10 minute time cap, right? 200 meter dumbbell walking lunges. Holy cow. 50 dumbbell box step ups. Holy cow. 50 strict handstand push ups. Whew, it's got me sweating. And then last, if you make it within that 10 minutes, 200 foot handstand walks. A lot going on there. Hopefully I can help you uh, move through this well and we can get you to optimize and maximize your, uh, your one and done opportunity here for 19.3. So first and foremost, right? Tips and tricks, manage your fatigue on those handstand pushups. So in the very beginning of the workout, right? You've got those dumbbell uh, walking lunges. You're thinking about hey, I want, to, I want to do this hard. And I've seen a lot of people in the gym already kind of uh, seeing how that's going to feel. That's not that big of a deal in terms of the overall grand scheme of things for this workout. The workout is going to start and end on those handstand push-ups. Okay? So you need to manage that fatigue. Don't go all out doing 20, 30, and then thinking that you're going to do 20 and 30 more unless you're an elite athlete. And I don't think anybody watching this is going to the CrossFit Games. Maybe, maybe not. What I would do is go into it with a very objective mindset and say, I'm gonna manage my fatigue, right? I'm gonna get off that wall quickly and I'm gonna chip away doing ones and twos, all right? So that's number one. Number two, specifically in the lunges, all right? You're gonna use your dominant arm. Don't go into it not using your dominant arm. Use your dominant arm and make sure you step through on those lunges. I see a lot of people when they do dumbbell walking lunges or walking lunges that they're not stepping through. And if you watch this video I post up, you're gonna see the step through versus the not step through. See what I'm talking about? Exactly. Fast transition if you need to switch. So some of you are gonna need to switch, and that's okay. Just make sure that you have a fast transition. Switch up in the air, versus bringing the dumbbell down and switching back over. That's a good opportunity or in a good option to have a fast transition. Next is gonna be those box step ups, all right? Your dumbbell setup is going to be key on this, okay? If you set that dumbbell up in your front rack position, right, not sitting on your shoulder, or if you have that dumbbell set up on your side, maybe that's not a great idea, right? Find what works best for you and then maximize and optimize that for those step ups. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here's some different types of ways that you can approach that. Um, I would just suggest see what feels comfortable for you and see how that's going to feel maybe under fatigue. So during your warm up, um, maybe do a couple reps of that under duress, heart rate up, and see how you feel. Get into a rhythm, all right? That's important. Don't just step up step down, take a break. Find a rhythm and stick to it. Yes, it is 50, but 50 dumbbell step ups with one dumbbell should not put you in a situation where you are blown up and you're not able to get to the handstand push-ups at the very least. 
Next is those handstand push-ups. And this is athlete specific, right? And if you look at the scaled option, everybody's doing strict push-ups. So there's really no way to get around this. Number one, stay close to the wall, all right? That's very, very important. The farther you are away from the wall, the harder it is for you to push through that position to get a good handstand push-up. Number two, fast singles or doubles. All right, it's important for you to realize that. Maybe you are someone that can get 20 strict handstand push-ups. That doesn't mean that this is an opportunity to showcase your ability to do 20 strict handstand push-ups. All right, so don't put yourself in that position. Quick singles, quick doubles, shake it out, get back on the wall. All right, um, other than that, if you do get to those handstand walks, and I'm not saying that in a way that, you know, nobody's gonna get to the handstand walks, but it's gonna be tough, right? But if you do, be prepared to be blown up, right? Your triceps are gonna be super fatigued. Everything's just gonna be hurting, okay? Um, it's gonna be something that you've probably never felt before because 50 strict handstand push-ups into or kicked up into a handstand walk is gonna be tough, right? So be prepared for those triceps to be super fatigued. I would suggest not trying to walk a full 25 feet, maybe walk 10 feet, five foot increments, um, but nonetheless, maybe a 10, 10, five, um, but don't try to once again showcase your ability to walk 25 feet because it's not going to be effective in the grand scheme of things. All right, now for the warm up. All right, the warm up. I'm a big fan of prepping and prepping and then going into more of a dynamic setup instead of just kind of cracking your knuckles and then going. All right, so the first thing is going to be your aerobic prep. Spend about 10 or 15 minutes, okay, switching between some sort of monostructural uh, device, whether it be an assault bike, a rower, a ski erg, some to that effect, okay? Spend 10 to 15 minutes doing that, all right? Just get your heart rate up, get your blood flowing, all that good stuff, okay? Next is gonna be some movement prep, all right? 10 to 15 minutes prepping those movements very, very specifically, your hips, your shoulders, your neck, all right? And lastly is gonna be your handstand walks. So first, with the hips, lunges, glute bridges, glute openers, mini band marches, um, anything that's gonna help get those hips fired off, okay? Shoulders, scap retractions, scap rotations, cat and cows, a little bit of yoga push-ups, Really trying to get that T-spine, that thoracic area, nice and fired off and ready to go for some strict handstand push-ups. Neck, you're gonna be doing a lot of this, right? If you get on those handstand push-ups, your neck's gonna get cranked. So let's get that neck warmed up and ready to go, doing some neck retractions and then some neck rotations. Something very, very simple, yet also very, very effective. And then lastly is that handstand walk position. If you feel like you're gonna get into it, regardless, warm up for it. Do some kick-ups, feel that position, right? Get that midline nice and ready to go. Do some wrist prep, okay? Your wrists are gonna be under tension on those handstand push-ups and on those handstand walks. So get those wrists ready to rock and roll. That's how I would prep aerobically and movement-wise for this workout. Then we go into an actual dynamic warm-up. Two to three sets, first 25-foot walking lunges with your workout game day weight. And then six to eight step ups. Feel it, see how that feels. It's gonna give you kind of an idea on how you're gonna approach that. And then next is gonna be two to three sets of two to three strict handstand pushups and then one 25 foot handstand walk within that. Ultimately, you know your body better than anybody else in your gym knows it. I would approach this workout with a little bit of reservation about thinking of wanting to do it a second time. That should not be your approach. There should not be an idea of I'm gonna strategize the first time and then go the second time. Unless you are, I've always told people this, one of those three tiers of athletes. Tier number one, you are going to be the fittest in your country, so you are gonna be a national champion and you will get a ticket to the CrossFit Games. 
Number two, you're top 20 in the world in the CrossFit Open. You get a ticket to the CrossFit Games. Or number three is you are top 200 in your age group online qualifier, meaning that you get a ticket to the next round of qualifiers to give you an opportunity to go to the CrossFit Games. If you find yourself wanting to redo this because you did not do well on your first iteration of this workout, I would take a step back and look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is this is a workout designed to test your fitness. It's not a workout to get you better. It's not a workout designed to make you a better athlete. It's a workout to test your fitness during a five week timeline. Attrition is key here. And if you're somebody who thinks that they're gonna do this a second or third time, think about the ramifications associated with that. All right, so that's all I got today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and if you do have any questions or comments, go ahead and email me at jason at CrossFitHabu.com. Have a great day. I